everybody. Welcome back, everybody. This is Tuned In with Jim Cummings. I'm joined, of course, by Jim Cummings. How are you doing today, sir? Wonder Bar. Great to be here. Nice place you have here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> and today, our special guest is Barry Gordon. You know him as the original voice of Don Tello, correct? Uh, yeah. And the former president of SAG, which is very, very interesting. Guilty, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, you you have first of all welcome. Thank you very, very, very much for being here. Oh, I, I your, love your, your with day you, off. Yeah. I appreciate that so much, and uh, and I uh, just just welcome, welcome. Thank you. You know, I uh, the first time I ever saw you, uh, you were in black and white. Uh, yeah, because it was on my television set. Oh my gosh! And you were being a very famous young person, <laughs> and, and, and and I thought this guy. I mean, I could see that you were around my age, and I was thinking, he's 40 years old. <laughs> the, the way you deliver, you, you had such a, a, an intelligent air about you. That has served you well. I it it has, and, and now I'm 13, so I think so, it works. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, we just reverse aging thing, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, you know, I have to pause before we go much further, and I want to thank you for doing such a great favor to me. Several years ago, I had a really bad uh, health issue. And I was just out of it. And simple as a, a, a stupid thing as this, I forgot to pay my dues a couple of times. And I and I, then I, I came out of my stupor or whatever, and, and I'm like, wait a minute, I, 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 what is this dental bill? What is this, you know? And and I thought, oh my God, what do I do? And they said, well, you know, you, you skip two uh, cycles or whatever it was. And I thought, well, why do I go? Maybe I'll call Barry. So I called you because he was president of the second. Uh, I figured if anybody has clout, this guy. <laughs> so, uh, and you were kind enough to make a phone call, and, and you were like, the Godfather, it's no problem, kid. Go ahead and talk it about It really wasn't. Thing. It wasn't a problem. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. very easy to do. Because, um, you know, I was a trustee at that time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't president anymore. I, oh. I'd given that. that. That was ages ago. Mm -hmm. It was, what, 88 to yeah, it was 95, wild. something like that. But, yeah, but you called me, and I was a trustee, and I got on the phone, and they made it easy. It wasn't me that made it easy. I didn't have well, to go through a lot of red tape. They just, I told them the issue, and, and they were cool, and um, and I'm glad it all worked out. Me too, and thanks again. Pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks for being here. You know, it's funny, I, we, we've uh, worked together X amount of times yeah. over the year, but I've seen you more in recent year, year, two, then, then back when we were working and doing all these series. Because of the Comic Cons. Because of the Comic Cons. Yeah. yeah. You guys should go to them and have fun. It's been a wonderful experience, you know, and, and we talked about that when, when the Turtles get together. Because mm -hmm. I only do them when all four of us can go. Oh. Because I'm lazy, sure. so, I, you right. know, so I don't go all the time. Yeah, you got so, so when all four of us can go, I go. And... Um, and we always say in the panels, and and I really feel this way, is that, um, you know, in this business, you lose touch with people. It's mm -hmm. very, very easy. It's particularly, I, I decided to retire when I was about, you know, 62. Because mm -hmm. I'd started when I was four, and I thought, oh, you were ahead of the game. You know, look, I'm going <laughs> to just relax now. And yeah. <laughs> again, thanks to the union, I had great pensions. Yes, and yes. My wife had a great career, so... We were all, you know, doing good things, and I just decided, you know, the rat race was not for me anymore, yeah. and so, um, so I retired, and it, it was after, the, and you know, so I completely lost touch mm -hmm. with with everybody, and I hadn't seen yeah. the guys in like twenty five years. Oh, you're talking about that. I didn't know. Wow. And Rob really put us together. Mm -hmm. um, for a reunion on his podcast, mm -hmm. talking oh, tunes yes. that he had. That's right. And Rob we decided Paulson, to do it. Yeah, Rob Paulson, who plays Raphael, and and we decided he decided he wanted to do a turtle reunion, so he put us all together, and it was the first time we'd seen each other in like a quarter of a century. Probably oh, done. And then uh, he also brought us together to do these comic book conventions, and. It oh, is right. really now. Now I mean, I could show you my phone and yeah. the, the threads, the yes. endless texts yeah. and threads. And now it's like having a new family. 
Oh. I mean, because I'm an only child, so it's oh. like having, you know, three brothers and Renee is a sister. Yes, that's right. And we're constantly talking to each other. And yeah. so that discovery was just amazing to me and, and a real blessing that, that came out of this yeah. whole thing. So. What a, what a sweet and seeing you again, sweet and sweet and Billy yeah. West, and, you know, so many yeah. great people that I hadn't seen in years. Yeah. Oh, it's so true. And even, you know, I'm, I'm doing a couple shows now, but... We're never, the whole cast is never there. They just right. don't do it. Right. And, I, and I, I, I think, I don't know if they used COVID as an excuse because they didn't want to do it. It was a pain in the butt to have all those people in the studio at one time. But I really prefer it. I think I'm better when other people are there because oh, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're trying to, you're doing, you know, all, all your little tricks because you're trying to impress the people around you. You're trying to get, you know, we're all like, come on, my baby, come on, my honey, <laughs> right, right yes. time now. Yeah. You know, we all want to get that applause. Yeah. We all want to get that going. And and when you're sitting there alone in a gray room with, you know, mattresses on the wall and, and foam, oh, bother. You know, it's just, it's just not the same. Well, you know, it's interesting you mention that because I totally agree with you. Yeah. And I was talking to Rob when he brought back the turtles and, when they brought back the turtles in 2012, mm -hmm. they did it in the same room. Yeah, that's good. Uh, when they brought back Animaniacs, they did it in the same room. Mm -hmm. So that was great. But that can be brought to an extreme. And the extreme was our producer on the turtles, Fred Wolf. Oh. Who shall we name? No, I just Fred named Wolf. him, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to say Fred. Wolf. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I no. Know Fred Wolf. He who, who should not be named, but will be yes. Fred Wolf. Uh, yeah. So what was his name, by the way? Fred Wolf. Fred Wolf. So Fred he, Wolf. Um, uh, you know, I was in fact I was president of the guild at that time while we were doing Turtles, and so I had negotiations in New York because the commercials contract negotiates in New York. Mm. So I had negotiations in New York, and I just said, you know, I'm not going to be able to be at the session. So, you know, let's find a studio in New York and I'll do the lines mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh no, no, if you can't be in the room, you can't be in the episode. So he replaced me yeah. for those episodes. Yeah. And wow. uh, he did that with Rob, when Rob couldn't make it. I yes. think he did it with Cam, when Cam. So if you have the full set, folks, yeah. Sometimes you're not going to hear my voice yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because another guy did it. Um, yeah, but that's taking it to an extreme because I think if you're missing one person, you should be able to. I let them, think so. You know, you know he, he had voice. a show just for the record, uh, just since we're on the subject, uh, called Zorro mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. Yeah, and it was uh, Townsend Coleman was booked as Zorro, and I was Sergeant Garcia of all people. And, uh, oh, very politically correct. Oh, we won't but, go there. I know, I know. That, <laughs> I know. <laughs> we all have done that. Sergeant but go Mick ahead. Garcia. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but, um, you know, Tony, uh, it, and they always wanted to do a read through. Okay. Uh, well, as it turns out, Towns, Townsend uh, was booked at NBC up until boom, boom, boom. He said, so, listen, no problem. I'll be there right on time, uh, about 920 to, you know, uh, to, to get started. I'm just over there till about nine, so it's going to take me a little while. So he won't, in other words, he won't be there for the read through, which is superfluous, especially if yeah, you're of course. Townsend Coleman. I mean, he, he, I think he can do this. And so he said, nope. All right. You're not, you're, you're fired. And they got somebody else. And, and I went, wait a minute, this is, he's not going to be there for the read through that nobody, everybody's going, oh, look out, hurry, run. Whoa, look out. Here comes the wagon. Oh boy. That, you know, and that was it. Miss, miss out on that gem. Of an experience, and uh, and so I, I just I, I wrote him a big long flowery note about never call me again, and I'm not coming back. And you bet now you have to get a new Sergeant Garcia, and he better be of Irish ex descent because <laughs> because if he's not, oh, you're a bad boy. I'm a yeah. bad boy. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so that was my experience. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, Barry. Sure. How did it feel when when they said if you can't be in the room that we're gonna recast? How did that feel? I just thought was it was insane. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I it, it was it was uh, astonishment. Mm. You know, and it kept happening. Yeah. So it you know I think there are like five episodes out of the 
193 that we did that um, mm -hmm. where it's not my voice. Wow. You know. Now, the guy that did it, though, is cashing in on it a little bit because yeah. he now goes to cons. I, oh, really? And I will not mention his name. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I'm going to find it And I really out. won't mention it. But he now goes to cons and signs the original Donatello. So, oh <laughs> no. boy! And technically, he has I mean, the word know, original on there. I do have or? a law degree. I'm a member of the bar, so technically, I would support him in that. I mean, <laughs> technically, he's right. He was on the original show for five episodes, for five episodes. and wow. and uh, and he signs his Funko Pops, and you know, wow. and that's that's it. That's fascinating. But yeah, yeah. but. Um, but it was it was strange, and and um, because it, I felt <laughs> it showed a kind of a yeah. lack of trust, mm. um, yeah. you know, because we weren't going to mess it up. You know, we'd go no. into the studio, we'd have a director there or something, and we'd do the lines. Yeah, exactly. But maybe he didn't want to pay for an extra session and an extra director. Maybe it was money. I have, mm. I have no idea. It could be. With that guy, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. What was his name again? No, I uh, wasn't. Uh, Fred, Fred something. Fred something. Yeah. Coyote, I think it was. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Amazing. Jim told well, me an interesting story on the way over here. He said that when you guys would be recording together, that you'd be studying law in yeah. between takes. Yeah, yeah. I was. <laughs> it was for, amazing. For part of it, I was in law school and, yes. uh, in the beginning. I remember that. And um, something you don't see at a lot of recording studios. Uh, yeah. Oh, look out! Careful, you kids. And then uh, yeah, over here, I know. according <laughs> to the Constitution. <laughs> I know. I felt a little guilty because I didn't want people to think that I wasn't paying attention. But you mm. know. no. But I kind of was. I was. I was reading you know. comic books right next. So to I would just come so right up and do my line and then back down. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I well, know. I had to admit I, that's how I did the whole Tasmanian series. Really? Yeah. You know, because he didn't even have lines. And you were studying law. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> oh. Comic oh, books. I, oh, okay. Comics. <laughs> I would be on Friday, and I'd go get all the new comic books about like that many. Then I'd sit there and read them. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> you know that that would, and I'd yeah. be reading my comic books. It's it's what we do now. Now we ruined everybody's concept of what. Yes, we. Have. <laughs> do you know what they do? Oh my god! They read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, Ashley. Yeah. Oh man. So what? What is the? Are we? Am I going to see you at any future cons here? Or are yeah. You really any? Yeah. I, uh, we have one Thanksgiving weekend in mm. San Francisco. Um, oh, that's uh, nice. I think it's Fan Expo that mm -hmm. we have, and then we're scheduled for like eight um, next year, starting mm. in New Orleans, the very first week of the year. Oh, I want to go to that one. And then. Um, and then uh, Arkansas, somewhere in Arkansas, mm -hmm. you may not I've want to go it. to that one. I don't know, I, <laughs> but no. I, I actually have I, it just actually been actually could be fun. Yeah. It could no, be a lot there, of fun. I was I'm looking there, forward and to there was it. a lot of people. And then, boy, we've got um, a lot in the South mm. next year. We've got uh, Chantilly, Virginia. It's the Big Lick Con. Wow. I understand um, they make good lace there. Do they? Oh, Chantilly. Chantilly. Lace. Yeah. And a pretty face. face. That's right. Pony tail, tail hanging down. down. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do the bad Elvis. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Big bopper. So we'll see you there, folks. Yeah. We'll, yeah. There will be a nose count. Yes. And um, in Raleigh, uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. Pensacola, and then not some non-Southern, like uh, oh. <laughs> I was uh, non Vegas and... Um, that's bread, isn't it? Non? Okay. Yeah, Vegas and what? Uh, Columbus. Oh, Ohio? I think, yeah. Ah. And I'm probably forgetting a couple. But. Yeah. There's a fine university there, I understand. Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there. See? Oh, yeah. I'm from Youngstown, so I got to <laughs> gotta represent the gang back home. Yeah, well, <laughs> my, uh, my son lives in Mansfield, Ohio. Mm. So. That's great. There's a hell of a good reformatory there. I need to turn my phone off. Uh, so uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Did I do that too? Okay. Let me. Would you call me so I can feel like I'm important? Quickly do that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right then. 
Yeah, I have a, I have another question for you. Sure. I'm, I'm just interested in your thoughts on this current SAG strike, oh, being the former president. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually am not going to talk about that too much. Fair enough. And, Fair enough. and yeah. the reason I'm not is because I'm not in the room. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've been in the room before. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So whether the room is the same as the room that I was in uh, or whether it's changed a lot, and my understanding is that it may have because there are new players, yeah, uh, which are the streaming uh, companies, yeah. right? Amazon, right. Apple. So they're very new players. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, uh, you know, obviously we all hope that it's going to end. Um, mm hmm Soon, soon, yeah, and soon. that it will end favorably, and, well. and that uh, I mean, I think AI is the big sticking point yeah. right now, mm -hmm. and should be, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a very difficult one to address. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a really a tough one. It's a really tough one, I, I think, because if you try and wrap your head around it, they're not replacing uh, the, the talent that any given actor has. They're not because they're just reproducing it. But they're ripping off the image that he uses to sell his wares, his or her wares, right? Mm. Well, there are some areas in which they may be <coughs> replacing talent, and one area, of course, mm. and we do represent background performers. And mm -hmm. so, interesting. Oh, That's the first time I've heard about that. Oh. That's you a know, good point. They could take a few people, duplicate them yeah. by the thousands, and um, and you know, a lot of people aren't going to be working. Wow. Yeah. Um, Can you imagine a bar scene in which all the people in the background are Humphrey Bogart? Yeah. That would be... Very strange. Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> I should have picked another name. Well, there but... might... Well, maybe there's a reason, though, in the plot that they would all be Humphrey Bogart. Well, that's and, true. You know, <laughs> that would be cool. Note to self, write that stupid show. But I right think, now. you know, it's interesting that the writers, of course, had the same, the mm -hmm. same issue. Mm -hmm. And I read this article... I don't think I'm misphrasing mis, uh, it, but I read this article in The Hollywood Reporter that they asked uh, Chat GPT, did I say that right? Is it mm -hmm. Yeah. Chat GPT to write a 30 Rock script. Mm. Mm. And it did. Really? They gave it a premise, and the premise was AI. That was the premise that people, oh God. people on the show were going to lose their jobs to AI. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Which is a funny premise. In that a way. is a funny premise, right. a little cannibalistic. But. So they gave it the premise and it wrote a script that was like perfectly structured. It had a beginning, a middle, an end. It was, I mean, they literally wrote a script. One problem there oh. was not one joke in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Not one. Can't teach a sense of humor, can you? So I think. I think that it may be useful mm -hmm. in some ways. It could even be useful to a writer. Mm. Yeah. But then when you try to say, well, I don't need the writer anymore, I think that may be where it breaks yeah. down. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's very tough. How do you compensate? Right now, I know the discussion is about scans. Mm -hmm. In other words, they want to be What's... able to own these digital scans of, of, uh, of star performers, of, of top performers, mm -hmm. yeah. and use them whenever they want. And then the question is, who owns it? The studio? Does the performer own right. it? What is the level of compensation? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there are so many issues about AI that, um, wow. that have to be worked out. I don't think they're going to be worked out in one negotiation because nothing like that ever is. Mm -mm. It's always a, a process. So, you know, but mm -hmm. you want to get your foot in the door and you want to be able to start with something. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where we are right now, but I don't know again, because I'm not in the room. Yeah. I don't know what the dynamics of the negotiating committee are, uh, which is, is also a thing because the, the president is not the chief negotiator normally. Mm. Now, that may be different this time. That mm. I don't know. But in the past, it, you know, the president's unpaid. The president's not a, you know, a paid person. The president, mm. in many ways, I don't want to use the word derogatorily, but I'll use it on my set, is, is a figurehead. Mm -hmm. 
what the president does have to do is to um, kind of build, coordinate, mm-hmm. build consensus, and do the political things that you mm-hmm. have to do. And that's a, that's a tricky dance because some mm-hmm. people want you to be very aggressive. Some people want you to, you know, get the best possible but soonest deal that you can get. Mm-hmm. And you have to kind of see, you know, what the, what the traffic mm-hmm. will bear. And yeah. it's, and it's um, I found it enjoyable and yeah. fascinating. I, I loved it. Yeah. Um, well, it had to have been a... a Beautiful challenge. Well, I did it for seven years. Yeah. I, that was the longest that anyone has done it so mm. far. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I did love it, and bef- it, it used to be very hard to get into the room. And when I mm. say the room, there was always a point of what was called sidebar. Mm. Sure. Where the top negotiators yeah. would yeah. leave their yeah. committees yeah. and get together and into a room, you know, four people, five people. And I understand that's starting to happen now. I, oh. I just saw something that said, you know, now you've got... Um, Getting close Ted's to progress. And Iger and, uh, and one other person, I think WB, in the room. Mm. And it used to be that people, the lowly presidents <laughs> of the <laughs> union, could not get into that room. Wow. Um, okay, that it makes was, sense. It was because the lawyers, the people that got paid the big bucks, at that time it was wow. a quarter of a million, now it's probably a million. But at that point, you know, they said, no, this is our job, and, you know, and you stay out. And, um, and that was the one place where I was a little aggressive because I said to them, I said, look, I can't do what I need to do in the negotiating committee if I'm not in the room. Because there's always going to be a certain level of distrust between the paid people and the actors. Mm-hmm. Do the actors, do they really know what we are and what we go through? That's what the actors are thinking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I got in by virtue of the fact <laughs> that I was in law school. Wow. And, so, and so I said, look, I know when to horn in, when not to horn in. <laughs> you know, when that's to keep good, my mouth a... shut, but but I want to be there uh-huh. so that I can honestly go back to the committee mm-hmm. and tell them what the heck is going on. Yeah, and they let me, oh, and good. and that was that was very good. And at some points, you know, it it went a little further than that, mm-hmm. you know, and they actually let me be involved, and 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 that was good. But. Um, but it is a, it's tricky. I mean, it's a dance because mm. you've got to be strong for your members, but you've got to be um, pliable mm. when you're at the negotiating table. Mm. And sometimes those things conflict, sometimes they don't. So, mm-hmm. so you know, what's happening right now, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird, these are weird times. Yeah. They keep coming up with... Uh, you know, we'd never have seen this one coming, you know, 20 years ago. Wait, problem with what? What is it going to be? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What is that? You know, it's. Well, there's also a more, a more, uh, another issue that we absolutely did see coming and mm. have seen coming for a long time. And yeah. that's the power of the streamers. Mm. And so, you know, we have to find a whole new compensation method because I don't think the traditional residual method is going to work there. Yeah, how does so it? So then what? Yeah, it, it can't. It almost can't. So then what do you do? And, and you know, is it based on a license fee? Is it based on I mean, there are all kinds of formulas that you can try to come up with. And, um, and that has to be resolved, too, so that people can make a living in this new media yeah. environment. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Well, there all, all the avenues to, to see movies, to see TV shows, exactly. hear music, it's just... It's it's unprecedented. We, we there was no template for this type of thing. No, and of course now we have it all because you know mm-hmm. we we fought hard to get a merger with mm-hmm. AFTRA, so now yeah. we're phono and we're radio and yeah. we're all of it. You know, yeah. new media. Um, so it's all one union except for theater. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you still do theater? I do little theater. Yeah, 
there's this wonderful company in Pasadena. It's called mm. Parsons Nose Theater. Parsons Nose Theater. Parsons Nose Theater. It was started by a guy. K N O W S or N O S E? No, N O S E. Okay, I was afraid of it that. It actually <laughs> was a. It's a line from the Queen Mab speech in Romeo and Juliet, Mercutio's speech. Oh, about I know it well. Queen Mab. And um, well, I didn't until I got I involved either. with this theater. Oh, good. <laughs> but. Um, but it's this little theater that was started by a fellow named Lance Davis who um, came out of the Guthrie mm. and so had a really good theater background and you know, worked with Guthrie and worked with Michael, uh, I can't think of his name, but the guy that was at the Guthrie who was like mm. world famous. And mm. So he worked with these guys and his, his feeling was that you have these plays that are three hours long four hours long and they're endless with Moliere mm. and Shakespeare mm. and you know Sheridan or whoever and he said I want to introduce people to them by doing like 80 to 90 minute versions of them mm. and so he does all of That's the adaptations idea. he does all the adaptations he cuts them he even does the translations uh, of Moliere himself wow and so he formed this little theater company. And for a while, it played like at coffee bars and all kinds of strange places. Mm. Um, and uh, and my, my wife knew someone who was familiar with them and said, you've got to go see this theater. And I was being a real... Uh, can I say this schmuck um, and elitist? No, you can't. I was being elitist, Red Wolf. No, and I was being, they're synonymous. Actually. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I was being, but I was being um, elitist, and I said, you know, it's community theater, and I don't really want to watch a bunch of amateurs, and I don't mm. want to spend my Sunday yeah. doing that. Yeah. And she said, it's supposed to be really good. I said, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I kept saying no, and I kept saying no, and I kept saying no. And then finally, it was like, she wrote me into it, and she said, no, we're going out to dinner with these people, and first we're going to go see the show. And I said, okay, we'll go. And I got to tell you, Jim, I was floored. Really? Because they're not amateurs at all. They're equity, they're SAG, they're after oh. a, not... I mean, you know, you turn on commercials, you see them. You turn mm. on oh, right. television, weekly television, gotcha. you see them. Character oh, okay. actors, just people that knew what the hell they were doing. Great yeah. people like Alan Brooks and Ivar Broger. And mm -hmm. uh, you may not know the names, but you would recognize their faces at a heartbeat. Right, right. And I said, oh, no, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Well, that's, so that's I went, treat. I said, I'm just going to, I met him, and I just said, Lance, I'm going to come to everything because I love it. Mm. And so the next show they had, I went, and Lance finds me at an admission, and he has a manila envelope, and he hands it to me, and he says, we're doing Cymbeline next, and he says, I want you to play Pisanio. I didn't know who the hell Pisanio was. I, I don't either. But <laughs> I, I said, don't. yeah. You wow. Know. So I've been, now with, I've been with this theater for like a no dozen kidding. years now. Wow. Wow. We actually moved into our own space. Mm. It's 40 seats. Wow, but that's cool. We've got cool. this great bar, not a liquor bar, but a wine and beer bar. We've uh -huh. got this great bar in the back. We actually took over an old mortuary chapel. The obvious choice. Yes. Well, for us, it was because it's very <laughs> Renaissance-y looking. I mean, it oh, looks really okay. good inside. So we, we took this over, and we've been doing shows, and I have been doing things that I never thought I'd do. I played Shylock uh, in, in a, a short Merchant of Venice. I oh, played um, Jaquies and As You Like It, you know, All the World's oh, a geez. Stage, yeah. that speech. Um, and I am having so much fun. Wow. That's awesome. What a gas. Yeah, we're doing a, a Dickens a tribute um, uh, but now we've kind of, since the pandemic, we've kind of switched because we did the thing with the costumes and the sets and all mm -hmm. of that, even though it's a tiny stage. But since the pandemic, we've been doing more like radio theater. Mm -hmm. oh, and nice. so we don't, How does that it's, work? it's quick rehearsal, right? You, you, and we just stand in front of microphones and music stands. Oh. 
and we do it. And you know, so we haven't lost any audience. We're, we're still bringing people in because in a sense, as you well know, and I well know from what we do, mm -hmm. it's the sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the sound, and, and, and they use their imagination to fill in oh, yeah. all of the rest of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're having a ball. So yeah, we're doing, um, in the next couple of weeks, uh, we're doing Dickens. Um, mm -hmm. We're doing a clip from uh, a, a novel that not a lot of people know, uh, Hard Times. Oh. And, uh, and Was that the one with Charles Bronson, the movie? Couldn't have been. Maybe no, Jim. The... No, it's not the one with Charles. Wasn't he? Bronson. Wasn't he a boxer in that but one? But they did do a movie yeah, called I, Hard I, Times. I, I, but I it's not very not Dickensian. The exact same. No, not... it's not. No. So <laughs> he doesn't win in this one. No, oh, nobody okay. wins. Right. It's right. Hard Times. It's Hard Times. So <laughs> nobody wins. Oh. And um, and and I, so that's what I'm. That's the theater that I'm that's doing. Great. And I'm having a great time. And, and it's, now and there's where. A, it is in Pasadena, Pasadena. on uh, the corner of Holly and Marengo, or like oh. a block down from the Pasadena City Hall. And, um, and it's a kick. If you get to, get to go, if you live anywhere near that, uh, come see it, because um, yeah. it's good work. And every year we do a Christmas carol, and I'm mm -hmm. one of the narrators, because oh, the narrators almost have all of the best lines. Oh, and yeah. so we're yeah. having fun with that. And, and plus you don't have to fiddle with makeup. No, well, none of this now is any, oh, no true. makeup, no costumes. We're just doing it now. We may go back to a regular production, but I mm -hmm. think everyone's enjoying this so much that we're trying to find a, a reason why we yeah. have to. And if it ain't broke, don't fix yet. it. Exactly. Wow, that's wonderful. And I, I'm a little out of retirement because of our turtles resurgence. Because mm -hmm. we did the original voices um, on the new uh, video game, Shredder's Revenge. Oh, wow. So they actually reached out and That's got great. all four of us to do it. That's and so cool. That was a ball. Wait a minute, who's Shredder? <laughs> well, Someone else. They didn't no, do a I'm Shredder, on, but I, I, well, I don't know who did Shredder. That's a good question. Yeah. Because you. Well, James is gone. God rest his soul. James is gone. James was the original, but, yeah. you know, you filled yeah. big, sh literally big feet. Yeah, they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were really big yes, feet. Yes. <laughs> And you filled them so admirably. Thank you, thank you. Are you going to do a little shredder? A little uh, get those turtles. There you go. Turtle power, shmertle power. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, it sounds just like James. That was the trick. At, yeah. That was the trick at the but time. But you see, you're so damn good at that. Oh, nuts. Well, thanks. I mean, you're, you, you, know. you just hear something and you can just emulate it. And I can't do that. Yeah. It's not yeah. my thing. My thing is I just... Use my own voice in about three different ways, and that's there about you go. <laughs> and look, and look, here you are. Yeah, and th that's yeah. that's not bad. Yeah, that's I got hired bad. from my own voice. Yeah, which was really cool. You know, people say, "Do Donatello," and I just, you know, really, you know, I am doing Donatello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do this Donatello, is Donatello every day ask, of my life. Ask my wife; she'll tell. She knows. <laughs> no, bebop is different. I don't do bebop all the time. There you go. But that's yeah, true. Yeah, mm. that's a different guy. Yeah, a couple of people thought that was me. Oh, and I can I, believe that. Sure. And I said, no, it wasn't me. I was, uh, who was I? Leatherhead and uh, yeah. a few other. Oh, Leatherhead was great because the Cajun. Was, yeah, the Cajun guy. That was so much yeah, fun. I, I think I've told this before. I don't want to bore you or anybody else, but that was, um, I had this mini philosophy that if you do a perfect impression of someone no one knows, it's a new character. Great philosophy. And if yeah. you and if you do a terrible impression of someone that everyone knows, you can't even tell who you're doing. That's a new character. And if, uh, like I say, if you do a perfect impression, no one knows it's a new character. Well, that was my uh, first tugboat ri uh, riverboat captain, Leonce Leblanc. Let her hear that was the way that he talked. That's the way he talked like that. And I thought, okay, he sounds like a Cajun alligator. And so uh, I, I used him, <laughs> and, cool. and they, they, they went for it. And I often wondered if, if like, his kid, because it was, like, maybe five, six years apart. Um, <laughs> I was in Hollywood doing this, and I wondered if his grandkids were ever going, hey, Grandpa, you want to come in here? You see this alligator? You know this guy? You know, you never know. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. I know, that's fun. Was it hard to sing like Mel Gibson? 
Um, oh, no, that was Jess. No, oh, I, is that I was, Jess? I was, I was, pow- I was uh, singing uh, like Russell po- Means. Uh, Russell Means, right. From Pocahontas. Oh, okay. He's talking about Pocahontas. Yeah. One of my major motion pictures <laughs> <laughs> that I was a comma in. Yeah, I think that's, that's about right. But it, they sold a lot of records, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Get a plaque on the wall. Very cool. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. What song was that for? Uh, Pocahontas. Pocahontas. Oh, okay. As the river cuts his path, mm. though the river's proud and strong. Mm. God, now I'm dying to sing the rest of it. That's a river. That is daddy beating drum. Okay, thanks. It's frankly one of my favorite uh, Disney scores. Oh, yeah, I think so too. I love that score. Yeah. 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 And I liked when they would go back and forth between the settlers and the Native Americans. Me too. The chorus is going back, and they were kind of saying the same things uh, and coming to it from a different angle. Yeah. It was a real eye opener. And Schwartz really really used the musical themes beautifully for both sides. Oh my God! You know that little bit of piratey, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean with the with the white people, and then those wonderful rhythms, and and then kind of merging it all in in Colors of the Wind. I I just really love that score. I sometimes just turn it on and listen. Well, you'll you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, I uh, I showed up one day. Um, It was at Capitol. Capitol Records, very iconic recording place, and uh, and Stephen was there. Stephen Sh- Schwartz and Alan Menken uh, mm-hmm. it was, and um, and they were writing the song. It wasn't quite written yet. Yeah, and they're sitting there going, sandwiches, sandwiches, send out Phyllis Newman, sandwiches, sandwiches. <laughs> I'll have ham on rye. <laughs> I'll have a tuna fish. I still want my ham on rye. <laughs> and, it, 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 and it was, and I'm going, okay. I, I'm surrounded by Academy Award winners going, sandwiches, sandwiches. <laughs> I said, so this is how uh, Oscars are born. And he that's goes, how you do it. Mm, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that that's was that right. was like one of my all time favorites. That's cool. And then the coolest thing about it was that. Um, I, 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 I don't think I've told this on a podcast, but it's too late. We're, I'm going to tell it. <laughs> when I sang that song, uh, as the, Steady as the Beating Drum, um, they didn't know who was going to sing it. Russell Means uh, wasn't, uh, he, he just said, no, I hope I sound good, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And so what they did, and it was so smart, I, I just remember thinking, this was genius. What they did, there was like a 30 piece orchestra. So they got a, a camera, and they set it up right in the middle. Of the um, of the of the orchestra, the violin section, whatever, and then the director would look at look at the camera to cue the singer to yeah. come in, and he and he, you know, mm-hmm. and he would look right at, and it was like he was looking right at me, because because they had the camera, you know, it was aimed sure. at me. The picture was, and it was one of the coolest sessions I ever did. I That's think. great. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I'm, I'm glad you remembered that for me. <laughs> Do you have a musical background, yeah. Barry? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Um, I, uh, mostly a failed one. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> but in this, in the sense, I mean, I've, I've had opportunities. I, I had a, a hit when I was six years old. Really? Yeah. Because I started, um, I st- when I was three. <laughs> Oh, so you were a seasoned veteran. I was on the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. Okay. As a singer, not, not as an actor. So, so I was on the Ted Mack Amateur Hour, and um, I got seen by a guy who was, was um, the manager of someone who ultimately became a pretty big pop star, Connie Francis. Mm, oh, sure. And he had this show in New York called Star Time, which was all kids. Mm. And kids would do sketches, and they'd sing or dance, or whatever they did. And I turned out at four at that point to be the youngest of the kids, and Connie was the oldest of the kids. I think, well, maybe not. I think the choreographer was a little older. But, mm-hmm. but she was like in her late teens. And uh, did that show, and then got seen by other people, and, and ended up doing a lot of variety shows. Okay. As kind of, mm. you know, oh, this guy's unusually mm-hmm. strange. 
And so <laughs> I, so I did. So I would go on and I would sing. And I was on the Milton Berle show. I was on the wow. Perry Como show, the Jackie Gleason show. Wow, I didn't know. And that. when I was on the Milton Berle show the first time, um, I, I, there was this orchestra leader. In those days, they had orchestras. Yes. And they were doing records. And he had just had this kind of hit record, um, uh, an old-fashioned kind of thing. I'm looking over a four-leaf clover. Oh, sure. And he was looking for someone to sing a Christmas record. And who better so, than a nice Jewish boy? So, exactly. <laughs> who better? So, um, I got 50 bucks. Oh. <laughs> 50 bucks to be the vocalist on the record. Wow. And I did the record. And I got a contract with MGM from that record. But that was the only hit. It was called Nothing for Christmas. And mm -hmm. so it was like Mommy kind of Daddy, big. Our That's man. it. Yeah. And kind of big. And, and you know, it sold like a million or so. And, wow. And um, so I got the contract. They changed the label, which was very nice. Because the original label was vocal by Barry Gordon, but they changed it to Barry Gordon, which was very nice. Um, oh. So they, they gave me the credit oh, sure. for the record rather with the Art Mooney Orchestra right, right. rather than the other way around. And then, but then it didn't go anywhere. But I kept having record contracts. I mean, I kept doing things. And as a matter of fact, you mentioned Capital. I had a contract with Capital uh, when I was about 20, um, and I, uh, 20, no, 21, 22. And I wrote um, and sang a whole album at Capitol at, in that studio, in the big wow, Capitol sure. studio that you were talking about, because everything was live yes. at that point. Um, and um, and just uh, it was fun, but it never never went anywhere. But yeah, I kept my kind of musical background, and and that's um, wonderful. Now I'm a musical theater junkie. I just mm. love. Musical theater, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but well, you know, I'm glad I you found your, your niche singing, out though. there, in good old Pasadena. Well, yeah, it's great, you know, that's and great. and um, and it's also a great place to live. So you yeah. know, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's home, and um, but it's it's been fun. So every once in a while, I get to you know bring the music out. Um, Sometimes even at a karaoke uh, bar, I get to. I've, I've heard of actually those. bring the music out. And, I've heard of uh, those. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, well, those are good. Those are good to get the uh, the con out of you. Uh, oh, when, yeah. At our conventions, when we go to those, and come see us, by the way, the next one, wherever it is. And, not uh, not the karaoke, the con. Not the karaoke. <laughs> yeah. By the way, yeah, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's phenomenal. You may not recover from the karaoke, but <laughs> right. the, the con. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, um, so I'm assuming we're going to have some together uh, next year. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, the fanboys. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fanboy of them. Yeah. Well, Barry, I thank you so very much for being here. Well, it's great. It's, it's just, really great to be with how you. How great is and, that? Uh, yeah. And thanks for, for letting me spend some time with yeah. you. Wait, before we wrap up, do you mind if I ask one more question? Not oh, at all, wait. no. I'm curious about the, the so actually it's kind of a two-part question. Okay. So being in show business so young, was your family in show business? Is that how you got introduced? Um, mm. No, not really. Um, well, my dad was a radio announcer. Okay. Mm. Um, I lived in Albany, New York when I was a little kid. And, and so um, he was a radio announcer there at uh, WPTR. And that's probably how I became musical because he used to bring records home and, you know, put me mm. to sleep to them and pat me. And, you know, and I'd feel the rhythm. And, and so I just started singing... Now, this may be apocryphal because you can't go by my memory, but I'm told <laughs> oh, here we go. that I started to sing in around nine months. Wow. Wow. But I do kind of know that once I could walk, I would walk around to the neighbors. We lived like in a development, you know, like a courtyard kind of development. And I'd walk around to the neighbors and I'd sing. And um, and wow. and one of them, I think, and I still don't know exactly who, but one of them submitted me to the Ted Mac Amateur Hour when they oh. see they went around the country, so mm. they were there in what was called the Tri City area, Albany, mm -hmm. Schenectady, okay. and, and uh, York, I think it was, and so 
Troy, Albany, Schenectady, right. and Troy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we just got this invitation. And in fact, when they, when my dad brought me there, because he asked me, he said, "Do you mm -hmm. want to do it?" Because he always asks. And he said, do you want to do it? And I said, yes, because, gosh, if I could sing for the neighbors, I'd definitely like to sing on TV. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's how that, that's how that wow. started. And, Interesting. Um, that's incredible. And unfortunately, I mean, you know, I did have a career, but then my dad had gave up the radio announcing for that. And uh, yeah. you know, slept around with me and then uh, ended up <laughs> uh, actually working in the Beverly Hills post office um, mm. for mm. most of his life. Interesting. Because we were, you know, it wasn't, since I wasn't on a series or something, it wasn't like, you know, oh, you're making all big, this money. Big money it wasn't big money. It was, go, you know, going. it was just a working actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And almost like a character actor, but a kid, yeah. you know, because the kind of things I did. So uh, I was a working actor. My mom worked at, you know, the department store. My dad well, that's worked in the to be post to office. And, and we put it all together and... Um, and they allowed me to build a kind of a fun career. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, they sure did. And speaking of That's which, wonderful. then how did that lead into what our other producer, Brendan, he's not with us right now, but he would kill me if I didn't bring up some more Ninja, Ninja Turtles type <laughs> questions. Yeah, he's a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm wondering what, what the casting process was like for that. Like Just anything else. Anything else. Like anything else. You did get you a have call, an idea you get a call from your be. agent. Mm -hmm. You know, go into a booth and um, yeah. and do the read. But the only thing that some people may not know is that everyone who read for the show read for all four turtles. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you know, and I have no idea what I did for Raphael. Or yeah, for, right, right. Or for I'm sure Michelangelo. I had played kind of a surfer dude guy on something. That's right. So I did yeah. some kind of a surfer dude thing. But um, but actually. When I, when I finished and looking at the dialogue, you know, I thought, I really want Donatello. I mm. don't. I just really I liked him. I identified mm. with him, and I really wanted him. And then I got the call, and they said, you know, you're Donatello. And they hadn't made that decision with Leonardo and Michelangelo. Mm. Mm. So there, uh, that happened actually the first recording session. Oh yeah, and um, wow, it was between Cam and Townsend, mm -hmm. and so they said to to Townsend, "Well, you do Michelangelo, and Cam, you do Leonardo, and then we'll switch. We'll do another pass with it reversed, mm -hmm. but they never reversed it, mm. and Cam will not let Townsend live that down. <laughs> <laughs> he so wanted Michelangelo. Oh. <laughs> and he will not let him live oh, that no. down. Oh, no. I, did, I yeah. didn't know that. Yes. All he, this time. Oh, all, oh he, he raises it at every panel we do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> For everyone. Oh, that's, that's amazing. But, yeah, that's, that's that. how it kind of happened. What was one of your best memories working on that show? That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Because it was so, it was so, um, I mean, every day was a treat. Every time we were mm -hmm. doing the show, it was just, it was a treat. So it's just so hard for me to pick out one, Yeah, you know, oh, Pat yeah. Fraley's improvisations. I mean, oh. how can you pick out one? It's like. Yeah, I forgot about oh that. Oh my being in there. God. I mean, he just kept us laughing yes, all yes. of the time. And James, you know, yeah. with his James bare Avery. big feet, because he'd kick <laughs> off his sandals, right? Yeah, yeah. He'd always <laughs> record in bare feet. And <laughs> Peter, really? who was Splinter in a way, I mean, uh -huh. he was always so gentle and yes. so loving and, and so yeah. wonderful. And we just very, saw him, by the way. Quiet. We just saw Peter and had dinner oh, with yeah. him. You oh, know, another great. benefit of us all being together was, yeah. you know, now we reached out to Peter on his birthday and oh. said, okay, we're going to have a birthday dinner. That's great. You know, so, um, so it's been a great ride and, and the fact that it's continuing is really mm -hmm. hard to believe. Um, and yeah. it's, it's really like a dream, but it's, uh, but it's a wonderful one. And uh, yes, it is. I hope I can do it till I can't do it. It's a wonderful dream. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yes. Yeah, well, that's, that's awesome. not coming anytime soon. Hope not. 
Knock on. <laughs> Gonna be 75 in a month, so. Yeah, I'm right behind you. I know. Yeah. I know. Hey, good night, everybody. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, I guess we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet, but yeah, yeah. It's, 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 we're on our way. Oh, I just thank you so very much well, for coming Well, thank you, here. Jim. God bless you. Love you, and, and thank it's you. always a pleasure to be with thank you. you. Oh. Thank you, man. Very that gorgeous. Great. That gentlemen. was great. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Do we need to sign off? I think we're there. Yeah, sure. Let me do that. Sure. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. That was another episode of Tuned In with Jim Cummings. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. And, of course, you can find bonus content on Patreon, and you can find us on anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much. Today we were joined by Barry Gordon. Pleasure to have you today. Thank you so much. Once again, this is Tuned In with Jim Cummings. We'll see you on the next one, folks. Thank you.